welcome back to another juicy episode of Bowmax. We're making like little Caesars today with a hot and ready episode just for you. So today we have a cool little application from biology. That's right. We're talking about these little critters called cicadas. And these bad boys, they're like these insects and they live underground for a long period of time. But every now and again, they'll come outdoors and they will make a lot of noise. Uh, that's why I call them screaming critters. They like just make this very loud noise. They come in these massive swarms that they can feed, that they can mate, that they can bring about the next generation of cicadas. These bad boys have a really, really interesting life cycle and it connects with prime numbers. So we have a dot representing a cicada. And cicadas, they uh, come in massive amounts, like an insane amount of them, just an insane girthy chunk of cicadas. And they have a strategy called predator satiation. And their massive swarms have to do with predator satiation. So what is predator satiation? Well, there's predator and there's prey. Predators are the animals that do the attacking and preys are the ones that get attacked, right? So um, like a bear eating a fish, in that case, the bear would be the predator, the fish would be the prey. So oftentimes cicadas, they are the prey. They're like these little insects. So birds, bigger insects, a bunch of different animals can uh, chow down on these guys. So what do they have for defenses? their main defense is in numbers. And so basically one cicada alone can't really do much. So the idea is, is if you have so many cicadas, a bunch of predators can like nibble you down. So let's say a bunch of predators eat these guys, they eat these guys, they eat these guys. The predators are all getting full on the cicadas. There's no more room for them to chow down. But because there's so many freaking cicadas, just by numbers alone, they survive, right? So their main defense is that statistically one of their homies is going to get eaten and they aren't going to get eaten so they can maybe survive. So that's what predator satiation is, just overwhelming your predators in numbers so that at least the majority of you will survive. But the thing is with predator satiation is that if you have your predators, so let's say you got a bunch of birds, I'll use the classic like seagull thing. So if a bunch of your birds eat the cicadas, they have more food so they can reproduce more effectively. They have a stronger population. So the next year, even more birds come about. And then if more birds come about, they can eat more cicadas. And then the cicada population slowly gets weaker because more birds are eating them. And the bird population slowly gets stronger because, well, there's more birds to eat the cicadas and they can um, just keep growing. So the thing is, is that this predator satiation, it seems like a good idea except long term your predator population is going to be getting stronger and stronger and stronger because they keep getting full bellies from your cicadas so this only works if the predators can sync up with the cicadas life cycle so what do i mean by this well for the majority of a cicada's life they spend it underground and when they're underground they just feed on um like the the stuff inside of tree roots and different plant roots um, so they're underground for the majority of their lives, but then for a very small period of time, that's when they surface. And when they surface, this is when they're vulnerable, and that's where birds and other insects can chow down on them. But while they're underground, they're relatively safe. So what would happen is that only while they're on the surface can these birds actually chow down on them. All right, so let's say your cicadas, they have a lifespan of eight years. So so every eight years, they'll come out to the surface and uh, have some fun. And then let's also say you had a bird population that uh, every four years they reproduce. So that's their average lifespan of about four years. So if we do that, then we see, OK, the birds, they come out every four years. And how frequently are the birds, uh, new generations lining up with the cicadas, uh, old generations? Well, we see that. Every two generations of birds, it's lining up with the cicadas, right? 
So that means we're still going to get kind of a problem with the predator satiation not working out where it's happening very frequently where these birds are able to kill the cicadas and eat them. So the birds population is going to be able to kind of grow around this almost expectancy that the cicadas are going to be there. And let's try another example. Let's say maybe there was a bird population where every six years they um, come about. So we got six. So if we had birds that had a a lifespan of six years, so every six years, kind of, we get a new generation of birds. We see that, all right, um, we have zero, and then they line up at 24, and then they line up at uh, 48. So we see that every four generations of birds, uh, we're getting kind of this lining up of the birds with the cicadas. So it's a little less frequent, but it's also going to be less likely to find a species of bird with such a or with a higher lifespan like that. But what, what do we see? How frequently do they line up? Well, this is a lowest common multiple problem, right? Because here in the case where we had a four year lifespan bird, they lined up with the cicadas by doing the lowest common multiple of four years with the cicadas lifespan of eight. So we saw that that was eight. So that means every eight years or every two generations of bird, they're gonna be able to chat down on the cicadas. For the six year lifespan bird, So there's six years with the cicadas eight years. That lowest common multiple is gonna be 24. So we see every 24 years they line up. So we see that the problem is, is that this eight here, the eight year lifespan of the cicadas, that's a number with a lot of factors, which means it's gonna have a fairly low lowest common multiple with a lot of different numbers. However, what's a number that'll always have a really big lowest common multiple of something? If you have a co-prime, right? Because we learned that if you take a number the lowest common multiple of a number with something that it's co-prime to, they have to be, th that lowest common multiple has to be just the product of those two numbers, which is going to be the biggest possible lowest common multiple we can get. And so what we see cicadas do is that there's two types of cicadas, and these are called periodical cicadas. So there's the 13 cicada, and there's the 17 cicada. So they have, as their name suggests, they have a lifespan of 13 years and 17 years. So every 13 years, they come to the surface, and every 17 years, the 17 cicada comes to the surface. So what is 13 and 17? These are both, that's right, prime numbers. And as we learn, prime numbers, those are co-prime with everything except for multiples of themselves. But what's the chance you're going to get a bird that like preys on cicadas that has like a 26 year lifespan or a 34 year lifespan. It's pretty unlikely um, that there's not too many species with that long of a lifespan. And even if you had that, what's the chance that those species are going to be in the same region as the cicadas? So most species of predators for cicadas have a much lower lifespan than 13 and 17, which means those numbers are guaranteed to be co-prime, which means that new generations are gonna be very infrequently interacting with these cicadas. For example, let's say we had a bunch of four-year uh, lifespan birds. So every four years, you kind of get like a new generation of birds. Um, now, if we think about that, we have four, what's the lowest common multiple of four and 13? Well, they're co-prime, which means that we just get their product. What's four times 13? That's 52. So every 52 years, you're kind of getting a new generation of birds able to uh, engage in the cicada's predator satiation. But that's so infrequent that it's very unlikely that the population of birds is actually going to be able to start adapting to actually expect um, eating these cicadas. And then similarly, let's say with the 17 year cicadas, what's the lowest common multiple of four and 17? Well, that's gonna be four times 17 which is 68. So every 68 years, you're going to be getting kind of a new generation of birds eating the cicadas because that's their lowest common multiple. But that's so infrequent that your birds are never going to be able to adapt to expect these cicadas. So the cicada population isn't actually going to be hindered by um, their predator satiation strategy. All right. And so you can try this with like several different uh, species. Maybe you can like go and look up some different uh, predators of the cicadas and see what their lifespans are. So maybe, you know, you could have like a wasp that maybe has like a two year lifespan. So let's say we have a two year lifespan wasp. How frequently is it gonna be interacting? How frequently is a new generation of these wasps gonna be interacting with the cicadas? 
Well, that's going to be 2 times 13, or 26. 26 years, still a long time, especially for wasps, right? Uh, or what about the 17-year cicadas? 2 times 17, 34 years, right? So we see here that kind of using this idea of co-primes giving us the biggest possible lowest common multiple, we see that in nature even, prime numbers seem like it's a good strategy for cicadas to uh, use in order to use their predator satiation strategy without actually hindering their populations overall. And I think it's really amazing that nature kind of ends up developing prime numbers and co-primes as part of its strategies for survival. And uh, you get all kinds of this just absolutely beautiful use of math in nature. And I'm really excited to explore those with you in future videos. But I hope you found this really interesting. I think this is like an awesome application of some of the stuff we've been learning in nature. But that's going to do it for me today. But until the next episode, you have a good one, you stay groovy, and I'll see you in that next video.